What's going on YouTube? Now I know there's going to be a lot of fresh faces on Back for Blood since today is the official launch of it. So I thought I'd start pumping out a couple of builds for the uh, decks for uh, people later on finishing the first uh, run through of the campaign and then possibly wanting to go on to harder difficulties. You're definitely going to need decks like this and builds like this to actually progress through and help your teammates in progressing through those harder difficulties. But today we're going to be talking about one of the DPS builds. Now, I know there's some people out there that, you know, don't exactly want the whole description on the build. And they just want to know what the card stack is. So I'm just going to slowly go through here, pause as you want, you know, get the cards that you need, get it in the order exactly, and you should be good. Now we're going to go into the description of why they're in the order they are and what, are, what each card is going to do for you. So two is one and one is none. We're, we're holding two primaries in this one, and essentially it's going to be a shotgun and sniper. Now there are some trade-offs to this that you could do and I'll explain those a bit later after we've gone through the list. Now the main thing about this one is the shotgun and sniper and emphasis on the sniper rifle. That's going to be our main DPS for taking out special infected, chunking away damage on ogres and other bosses inside of the game. Now that's the first card considering every time you start up a run, the first card in your deck is going to be the one that's automatic starter card. It goes straight in, you don't have to pick it, it's just happening straight off the bat. Now, for the next five cards, these are what are gonna be available for the first pick. You could essentially choose what you'd like during this, but I preferably go for Weapon Scavenger because it spawns in more weapons throughout the game. And essentially you want this going through the entire run or a full act, considering there's different rarities to each weapon, going from green to blue to purple, with each one having a different firepower that's higher than the rest, or sometimes you may not have many attachments in the beginning, but you'll run across some weapons that have three to four attachments, some even with uh, legendary attachments on them. This can be hugely beneficial, not only for you, but your teammates along the run. Now, Avenge the Fallen, I usually pick this one either first or second, but generally Weapon sca Scavenger comes first. But essentially, when a teammate becomes incapacitated, all teammates gain 30% damage, 20% reload speed, and unlimited ammo for 10 seconds. Now, this is really good in case either you go down, and the good thing about this with being the uh, dual primary, you'll have the shotgun while you're on the ground, so you have 30% more damage with that, as well as your teammates being able to destroy whatever is incapacitated. You may be a special infectants on top of you. Who knows, anything can go pear-shaped inside of this game, but since you're the main DPS, if you were to go down, or if one of them was to go down, this is going to help mitigate that issue of being overpowered by something and just being able to clear through. Now, Ridden Slayer, 20% weak spot damage. Obviously, this is going to be especially good for your DPS build, considering the fact that you're going to be dominating the field when it comes to Special Infected. This is just going to help with that damage per second. Obviously, the, with this one card, especially in Recruit, makes a lot of things possibly a one-shot with sniper rifles. A lot of times, sniper rifles what you're going to choose to use against Special Infected, but we'll get into those weapons later on and show you what you need to, what you need to pick up along the way. Now, Silver Bullets, 10% bullet damage, going for the shotgun and the sniper, 150% bullet penetration. That's going to be great for your shotgun and clearing some of the regular infected around you. It's going to push through them as well, killing multiple targets if they're in a line. Now when you see, when you kill a mutation, you lose five copper, trust me, it's not going to affect you, you're going to have plenty of copper for the next level. I've never had worries with it. Now padded suit, plus 10% damage resistance, plus 5 to health, and negative 20 to the stamina efficiency. Trust me, the stamina efficiency, you're not going to be running a whole lot with this build, but your stamina you have going to be perfectly fine. All the efficiency is, is how much it drains or how quickly it drains, and 20% really isn't going to hurt you. Now, the reason we're getting 10% damage resistance is become, whew, because some of the cards coming up are going to have negative 2-5% of the damage resistance, and this is going to mitigate that. Now, Stock Paps, this is one of those cards that I need to uh, do a little bit of an extra explanation on. If you're going through the campaign and you haven't finished it yet, I suggest if you're going for a build like this into uh, veteran difficulty, pick up a sniper rifle and get 500 kills with it that's the only way you can get this card this isn't one you can buy up out of the supply lines and it's super beneficial with the fact of sniper ammo capacity and 10 percent damage and sniper rifles rolling thunder 35 percent move speed while firing with shotgun plus 10 percent with shotgun damage it's going to help you a lot along the way patient hunter kind of on the fence about this one it is good but it's situational at the same point 
but if you're facing an ogre or something else, essentially you can get 30% more damage while aiming down sights, but as soon as you pull out of aiming down sights, you're gonna lose that whole damage percentage. But sometimes, even with Special Infected, they'll have armor over their weak spot. This could be beneficial. Could end up uh, you aiming down sights, hit the armor off, and then the next shot should be an instant kill, especially with all the damage we've got going right now. Now glass cannon, 25% damage, but negative 30 health. That's the reason it's so far down the line of this deck. Some people, you know, why is the 25% damage so far down? Well, the simple fact that that 30% health taken away, it's a huge take and a veteran damage is a bit higher. Friendly fire is a bit higher. So having less health in the beginning, even for that buff to damage, isn't going to be worth it in the beginning. But once you have most of these cards stacked out, it's going to work out a bit better. Now hydration pack is going to be the thing that mitigates that negative 30% because we're going to get that 25 health and as you saw before we're getting the 5 health with the padded suit so we've essentially everybody starts with 100 health so you're losing 30 health but now you're gaining it all back at the cost of negative 15% ammo capacity but trust me ammo is not going to be a problem with this build you can have plenty I can't honestly think of any moment where I've actually ran out of ammo for the shotgun or the sniper. Now, reload, obviously, shotgun and the sniper. Long reload times. That's why we're gonna mitigate that with the 20% and with the wide mouth magwell. 30% reload speed, we got 50% reload speed. It's gonna help a whole lot, especially with a sniper rifle and or more specifically with a shotgun, considering some of those shotguns you're gonna have to go shell by shell. Trust me, it's gonna refill a lot quicker than you think it will be with this 50%. Now, Reckless Strategy, obviously another one for the 30% weak spot damage. You're having 50% weak spot damage at this point. So Special Infected are going to be easy targets for you. And the last but not least, we got Confident Killer. When you or your team kills a mutation, gain 1% damage up to 15% until the end of the level. This is just something that's at the end because, ah, you know, it could be good earlier on could be good if somebody else was holding this card possibly this could be one of those that's kind of uh, you could trade it off for just about anything but it does in better difficulty there's so many special infected towards the end especially of runs that this is going to help a lot considering it's just going to be that amplified 15 percent damage now some things if you wanted to change up maybe you didn't want a shotgun as your uh, secondary maybe you wanted to go with an ar there are some things you could trade off. You could take out the Rolling Thunder and go for something like Shredder, which is gonna increase, which is gonna hit, oh, goodness. All right, hold on, boys. Each bullet hit causes the target to take 1% increased damage for three seconds, stacks up to 15%. So this would be really good for an AR, an LMG, possibly an SMG as well, if you were looking to go for that. As well as if you're going for an SMG, you could take out a, where is it? Oh, I'm missing it now. There's several different changes you could choose. Obviously, Silver Bullet is going to be further down the supply lines. So at the beginning, you'll probably have combat training or large caliber bullets. These are going to work in case you don't have the Silver Bullets yet. I've also got a build or a, I've got a video previous to this showing how to farm some of the supply lines. Let me get into that real quick. Now for a lot of the DPS, you're gonna go with this first starting uh, supply lines. These are gonna be your DPS ones. The middle one's gonna be a bit of healing and some of the weak spot damage is gonna come from this bottom. So that's gonna be some good things to note. If you're going for this DPS build, go through the top and the bottom build of these supply lines. The top one's gonna be main for all your DPS needs and a few of the cards are gonna come from down below. So kind of trade off in between while you're going through the campaign. And specifically, the cleaner that you're going to use is gonna be Walker. Not only does it give 10 health to everybody, even you, it also gives you a flat 10% damage increase straight off the bat with precision kills, also giving you 20% accuracy, which is gonna be perfect for when you're using the sniper rifle. Now, when it comes to weapons, this is what you're gonna be using for the most part. A lot of times at the beginning of each match, there's a difference, ranch rifle and the M1A. They look very similar, but only one of them is a sniper rifle. A lot of times, the M1A is gonna be the weapon that you're gonna start out with at the beginning of runs. It's good, but it has a bit of recoil, as you can see. But you can mitigate that by 
going for a high zoom scope. This is gonna amplify the weak spot damage, which is gonna be perfect for everything. You want the long barrel. And one of the bigger things is gonna be stumble. Now, a lot of times I've kind of, mm, this is the kind of trade-off moment when it comes to the sniper. Obviously the M1A can be solid in the beginning, but you're gonna to wanna to trade it off for the Phoenix or the Barrett. Now the Phoenix has 95 damage, but the Barrett has 100. Now at certain times you may find different rarities of one of them being a bit higher, it could be 15 points of damage more. And I'd say go with whatever weapon that is if it's that much higher. But the Phoenix has been doing me right recently. Now the attachments you're really gonna be looking for, you want the high zoom scope. Now these attachments right here are not all the attachments that are in the game. There'll be uh, different rarities of these scopes. There'll be one that's purple that goes up to about 40% damage. So you'll have essentially, once the, once the whole deck's built out through a portion of the run, you'll have 90% weak spot damage. Gonna be highly essential. One thing that you also wanna go, swap speed is one of those things you know, sometimes it could be slow. Sometimes it could be uh, just right. What am I saying? Essentially, swapping between the shotgun and the sniper rifle. If you feel like it's too slow, go for that stock. But a lot of times I go for the ADS speed because you want to you want that quick scope action. Now there'll be different rarities of this as well, so it will be a lot faster. And obviously you want the effective damage range because you're gonna be hitting some of those special infected from longer ranges. And one of the most essential things is you're gonna look for reload speed and bullet stumble. Bullet stumble is one of the biggest things for this build when it comes to the sniper rifles because some of the special infected, you know, they'll be charging you, say they'll be in mid attack. If you hit them with that bullet stumble, it's gonna stagger them, especially the fat boys. The fat boys are gonna get staggered whether or not you have the bullet stumble when it comes to this sniper rifle or if it comes to the Barrett. They're gonna instantly get stumbled. So say one of them's charging up like an exploder, you don't want your team to get you know, blown up, thrown off across the map. Hit them with the sniper rifle. You'll be able to push them back. Don't hit the weak spot just yet. Hit them again and it'll stumble them even further back to the point where you can just kill them right off the bat. Explodes without hitting anybody on your team. Now say you've got one of the tall boys, a crusher, maybe the bruiser. Somebody, you know, you see somebody that's coming up right on them. Maybe he's mid attack. You hit him with this, you'll be able to stun them and stop them from doing that slam down or that choke maneuver with the uh, crusher. That's going to be essential at saving some of your life, saving some of the healing that you may need later on, and just essentially saving your teammates along the way. Now, when it comes to shotgun, yeah, sorry, I'm kind of losing myself real quick. There's four different shotguns in the game. Essentially, it's up to you what you really like. This is going to be the thing that's just kind of clearing some of the special, in, or not the special infected, but the regular infected coming around. Arguably, A12, fastest round one and the fastest reloading one at that because it comes with a drum mag. As you notice, it's a lot quicker. It's not very quick right now, but with that extra reload speed, it's going to be a lot quicker. Whereas if you have one of these, you can see how slow that can be. Now, the trade-up between these two is the fact that the 870 Express has slower fire rate, but longer range. Now, the Super 90, I mean, you can just start plowing away with that, but whereas this is kind of like pump, pump, pump. Now, there's no way to increase rate of fire in this game, so this is kind of be, you know, what you find. Sometimes that, that is essentially what it comes down to, whether or not you find one or the other. This one may have higher damage, but as you can see right here, only three rounds in the magazine. Not gonna be essential for clearing. You're gonna want this or the Super 8. Now at the same time, you'll find different attachments for it. Now it sounds crazy putting a shotgun with a sniper rifle, but it can help out. It's just more damage, especially with the spread factor on this. Maybe a few pellets hit the head of just uh, regular zombies. Gonna clear them out pretty quickly. You also want effective damage range on this and I'd say swap speed is one thing you're gonna really want for this. And when it comes to uh, the magazines, obviously you want the reload speed. When it comes down to what you really want with this, I don't think bullet penetration is really necessary considering we already have cards going for that. But if you really felt like you needed it, going through more zombies, sure. 
bullet stumble can help sometimes you don't have the time to switch to that sniper rifle effective immediately so sometimes you can just use this to kind of stumble some of the special infected considering you already have amplified damage on the shotgun it's still good but it doesn't do as much damage as a sniper rifle will but essentially i'd probably go for bullet damage more than likely just to kind of give it that extra oomph and just kind of when that bullet bullet penetration happens the longer range it goes through certain zombies the more damage it's going to have as it effectively goes through the range now uh, effectively that's uh that's all you'll need to know and uh, that's the build in and of itself i've been running this with a buddy of mine on uh veteran difficulty we've been two manning him being a healer and me being the dps with two bots We've been going through it pretty smoothly. It's an uh, effective deck. It's really going to work out pretty well. And like I said, you could change up some of these. This is basically a starting point. I definitely don't have all the DPS cards yet as well, considering it's it's a bit of a grind to go through all these supply lines and get all these cards. Still haven't gotten all of them yet. But I'll have a, a healer build coming out tomorrow. I'll work with my buddy on that one get his references on wh what exactly he's been working with and put out a video on that so if maybe you and one other person are the only ones playing in it trust me you can make it through veteran don't know about nightmare feel like that's definitely going to be the necessary of a four-man team with stacked out decks but we'll have more decks coming out as well I'll have melee build coming out i'll have a different smg build healer more things to come so if you like what you're seeing here if you enjoyed this content hit that like and subscribe button greatly appreciate it if you want to head over to the twitch i'm streaming this for the next few days as well as i'm grinding it out going through veteran and possibly going through nightmare it's going to be a good time but overall hope you enjoyed this hope this helps you out hopefully this is something that uh is going to help you through your ventures or maybe you just show off to some friends like yeah i've got a good build going on what do you guys got but anyways all right guys Hope you enjoy Back for Blood. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one.